All right, now I'm going to train you to be a box modeler. It's going to be great. The thing about a box modeler is, well, we have to produce everything out of a box, right? So we must learn, just like kindergarten, our basic shapes. And once you learn your basic shapes, it's easier to become a box modeler. Now, along with the basic shapes, we have to kind of look at all the tools involved in box modeling. That being said, let's take it very slow. Um, let's go into edit mode first and kind of look at that. All right. First off, to understand edit mode, I need a little bit more resolution on this box. Okay. To do that, I'm in object mode. I go over to the wrench and I add a modifier called multi-res. Let's go over here and hit subdivide and do it one more time. And then hit apply and that'll always be there now. We'll get into modifiers as we go, probably mainly in this chapter too because we'll need it. I gotta set my preferences back. I need input of Maya, Maya. Save as default. There we go. And just to be very proactive, just for the next couple lessons, I'm just going to say save user settings. That'll make a ball in the center of the world instead of a box. Okay. Selections and edit mode. So to toggle edit mode, you can hit tab on the keyboard. You can also go down here and go to edit mode, to object mode. Good. Notice that this is wireframed. If I go back to object mode, it's not wireframed. I like seeing wireframe regardless of, okay? So, over here, under the box, we go down, and I can display wire in object mode. I can tell the difference between object mode and edit mode because all the lines turn black. So that's just, it's called wireframe on shaded back in Maya. All right. Now, let's go to vertices, edges, and faces, okay? So I can toggle these with these buttons, and I like to just stick with the buttons. Control tab will bring up this interface that allow you to do it. So once in a while, you might see me do this. But for the videos, I like to just instantly go down here for the first couple lessons because I don't want to freak the student out. Maybe they didn't have control tab written down in their notes. Okay, I'll go to edge. Left click allows you to highlight any edge. Shift alt allows you to highlight an entire loop. Okay, ready for this one? This is an arthritic nightmare. Shift, Alt, Control. Allows me to select any edge ring. That goes true for every component. If I go to face, and I want to highlight an entire edge ring of faces, I use Shift, Control, Alt, and I can highlight an entire edge ring. vertices and I could select none here there we go vertices work the same way so if I use shift and alt it highlights an edge ring so technically I can be in vertex, vertex mode and I can still kind of work with edges this way 
The only difference is there's no such thing as an edge ring in vertex mode. But you can see here, if I keep holding Shift and Alt, I can also work in faces with vertex. So vertex is a very powerful thing in the fact that, you know, as long as I'm highlighting the right stuff, let's say I don't want to go down to faces, I can go like this, and there we go. Now, a couple other tricks. Let's say I duplicate this ball. I'll highlight a single vertice and hit L. Shift D will allow me to make a duplicate of it. Okay, now these are actually part of the same species. If I hit tab, notice that they are the same group. They move the same way together. They're actually joined together. Okay. Hit tab again. I wanted to do that because I can teach you how to select single component and single object. How to do this is if I click on one simple component, I can hit L on the keyboard and it'll only select one of the spheres. But if I want to select everything, I hit A. Hope you're taking notes all on, the, all on this. If I take L on the keyboard, and let's say I want these two to be separate objects. I mesh vertices separate. And I separate by selection. All right, let's see what happens when I hit tab now. They are two different objects. This one has a jacked up uh, manipulator. Notice it's not in the center. We'll get into uh, moving this a lot la uh, much later. Um, it's one of those things that is kind of a pain in Blender. That's the only thing I don't like about Blender is its uh, manipulator and how to get it in the center or in a weird area of the object. Center is easy, but let's say I wanted to put it exactly on this vertice. That's a little tougher, but we'll get into that. It's not that bad, but to a new student, it's awful. To put this back in the center of the sphere, I go Object, Transform, Origin to Geometry. Voila. Remember, you had to be in object mode to do that. All right, now that these are two separate objects, I know the next question you're going to ask. You're going to ask, how do I join them back together? Okay. Let me hold shift. Object. Join. Now they are part of their own species again, and they move with each other. All right, so those are some of the basic selections, joins, separates. Now let's look at some other things in the next video.